This is Chainsaw Man Season 1 Recap, Part 2. Don't forget to click that notification icon to stay in tune with our latest videos. Let's begin. Wide-eyed and shaking, Denji grabs Power's breast and has his first fondle when a pair of breast pads falls out of Power's shirt. When he's done and Power walks out of the room, Denji remains in the bathroom, speechless. The next day, a downcast Denji sits on Makima's chair in her office to stamp some papers. Noticing his demeanor, Makima asks what's wrong and Denji shares his disappointment with her. He says that despite already achieving his goal of fondling breasts, it did not meet his expectations and that he is still devoid of satisfaction. A serious expression befalls Makima's face, and she tells Denji that being intimate with someone only feels good when you can connect and understand your partner. They have an intimate moment and she guides Denji's hand to her breasts, baffling the boy so that he falls off his seat. Before the poor Denji recovers from this, Makima presents him with a mission. She tells Denji that she wants him to beat the Gun Devil, an undefeatable devil who is said to have appeared 13 years ago from unknown origins. Makima trusts that Denji will be the one to kill it. Since this devil is formidable and not quick to slay, she promises that if Denji defeats it, she'll make any one of his wishes come true. One snowy morning, two brothers go out to play. The older brother instructs the little one to go back inside and get his gloves so they can play catch. Suddenly, an enormous explosion took place. It was so strong that it blew away the boy's house, along with his little brother and parents inside it. Across the country, it killed over a million people. This was the first and only appearance of the gun devil. And years later, the boy that lost his family turns out to be Hayakawa. According to Makima, in order to slay the gun devil, they must first find it. This could be done by collecting and sticking together pieces of the devil's flesh, which are in the form of metal shavings and bullets, and make it as big as they can so eventually, as it gathers mass, it would attract to the devil itself. She adds that these bullets are so potent that any devil who chews on them instantly becomes more powerful, no matter their nature. A lead has been found in a hotel which Hayakawa and his partner Himeno lead the team into, consisting of Power, Denji, Arai, and Kobani, the latter ones being Himeno's trainees. To spice up the chase, Himeno promises that whoever gets a piece of the flesh of the gun devil will get a kiss from her. Denji says that he has already plenty of motivation to kill the gun devil and he's not after Himeno. However, Himeno challenges him that if he does the kill, she'll kiss him with tongue. They get inside the building and encounter a devil. After slaying it, Himeno reveals that she traded her right eye with the ghost devil in exchange for letting her use its ghost hand. They continue to search the building. In the next floor, Arai notices that the same splatter of blood from when Himeno killed the previous devil was also on the new floor they're in. He goes to check which floor they're currently on, noting that they should have ascended from the 8th floor to the 9th. To everyone's confusion, they see that the level that they're at is still at the 8th. He proceeds to go back downstairs to check the floor number of the previous floor. He reappears, but in the staircase from the level above. Kobeni muffles a cry of terror. Himeno follows Arai and also appears in the staircase from the level above. They realize that they're trapped on the 8th floor, and it must be the powers of a devil at work. The clock is frozen at 8.18. Time is not moving, which means that nobody will be alerted of their disappearance from outside and no help is coming. Kobeni cries and Power laughs at her. Denji doesn't feel worried and sleeps off. After being trapped for a while, the team claims their respective rooms to be alone while they think of a plan. Hayakawa and Himeno recall the time they spent together as new partners, especially the time when she convinced Hayakawa to smoke. Hayakawa, after a lot of nagging from his partner, finally yields but swore that it would be the last cigarette he will light and use. Back to the present, Hayakawa returns from his inspection of the 8th floor and asks Himeno for a cigarette. Himeno only has one left but Hayakawa pleads with her to let him have it. After a puff, he tells the team that he discovered that the monster they killed earlier was getting bigger. As if on cue, the monster appears alerting everyone. When they face it, it offers them a deal. Offer it Denji's corpse and it will set the rest of the others free. Himeno again conjures her ghost arm and attacks the devil, but with every injury it receives, a new extension of its body sprouts. Kobeni attacks Denji with a knife, meaning to offer him to the devil, but Hayakawa stops her in her tracks and Himeno knocks her unconscious. Arai tries to convince everyone to sacrifice Denji so they can get out but Hayakawa and Himeno both agree that killing Denji is not a sound plan. When Kobeni regains consciousness, her terror gets ahead of her and blames Power for trapping them there. She attacks and screams, causing the devil to go berserk. The devil sets off on Hayakawa, Himeno, and Denji run. 
The devil reveals itself as the Eternity Devil, and it repeats that it desires to have Denji's heart. Out of options, Hayakawa decides to use his sword, but first asks Himeno if it's alright with her. Without answering, she uses her ghost hand to restrain Hayakawa, saying that using the sword might set them free, but it will take off years of Hayakawa's life. She decides to sacrifice Denji instead. Arai pins Denji down and Himeno lunges at him with a knife, but Hayakawa frees himself from Himeno's ghost hands and takes the stab for Denji. Bleeding, he says that he alone cannot defeat the gun devil and needs Denji to live so he can help. Moved, or not, by this, Denji steps up and faces the Eternity Devil, which she discovers is afraid of his chainsaws. He remembers that it screamed in agony when Himeno injured it with her ghost hand, so he plans to injure it until it can no longer take the pain. He looks back at Hayakawa, still in disbelief when he took the knife from him, but hides it with a sarcastic remark. Denji pulls his string and jumps off the duel with the Eternity Devil. Denji and the Eternity Devil fight intensively, but there is no clear winner as Denji starts to lose a lot of blood. Power tells him that at some point Denji's chainsaws will retract if he keeps on losing blood. However, Denji devours his enemy's blood to regain his strength. Himeno, seeing Denji fight, sees just how insane he is, and realizes that he must be the one to defeat the Gun Devil. Midway through the fight, she hands Denji a helping hand, and the fight of the two bloodthirsty devils goes on. Three days later, Denji retains his homicidal spirit whilst the Eternity Devil finally exposes its heart and begs Denji to end it. Denji does so without hesitation, and they unceremoniously get out of the building. Denji takes out a bullet, a flesh of the gun devil that he retrieved from the Eternity Devil, and then passes out. Himeno instructs Arai and Kobeni to return to the headquarters to report, while she and Power take Denji and Hayakawa to the hospital. When Hayakawa recovers, they return to the building to take a closer look at the remains of the Eternity Devil. Hayakawa finds a small piece of its flesh, and they talk about a party to be had with the Special Division 4 that night. The two speculate on what Denji's true nature is, given that the Gun Devil seems so intent on getting his heart and also Makima's special interest in him. They agree to get Makima to tell them later at the party. Later at the party, Hayakawa asks Makima about Denji and why devils chase after him. Makima challenges him by saying that she will tell if he outdrinks her. Late into the night, and a mountain of empty beer cups later, a drunk Himeno lunges at Denji without warning and passionately kisses him, as promised, with tongue. Denji feels conscious knowing that Makima is looking, but soon relaxes and lets Himeno take the reins. After a lengthy kiss, Himeno, who had one too many to drink, nastily pukes in poor Denji's mouth, traumatizing the boy. The night ends with Denji puking his dinner out in the restroom. When it was time to go home, Makima noticed that Denji is nowhere to be seen. Denji wakes up with a thirst belonging to someone who had drunk more than they could take and finds himself in Himeno's bed. Himeno, still drunk, expresses her jealousy about Hayakawa and Denji's infatuation with Makima. She lays besides Denji and whispers something in his ear. Wanna do it? Denji unwittingly asks what she meant by that, and Himeno slyly tells him. Himeno eases off his shirt and then his pants, when she finds a lollipop. Denji remembers Makima and his first indirect kiss with her. This makes him change his mind about Himeno. The next morning, Himeno offers Denji breakfast and asks if she did anything reckless last night. Denji tells her no and that his first time is going to be with Makima. Himeno studied him for a while and then asks Denji if he really likes Makima, to which he answers yes. She proposed to help him to get together with her if Denji helps her to get with Hayakawa. Denji thinks about the arrangement for a while and then gladly agrees. Makima is on the train to Kyoto with her assistant. When the train goes under a tunnel, some identified agents who are sitting disguised in the seats in front and behind them pull out their guns and shoot at her. Gobeni and Arai are seen helping an old woman find her way. When they turn to leave after, the old woman points her gun at them, and a loud bang ensues. At the restaurant, Denji, Himeno, Hayakawa, and Power are having a meal when a man from the other table starts throwing insults at Denji. He then shows a picture of him with the Yakuza, Denji's previous employer, revealing himself as the son. He whips out a gun and shoots Denji in his head and badly injures Himeno. Power is on her feet and gives the man an uppercut as Hayakawa summons the Fox Devil to devour the man. However, he slices through it and gets out. When he emerges, he is already in a different form. The man now has an enormous katana for his head and both his hands. Hayakawa wields his sword and stabs the katana man clean three times, until the cursed devil connected to Hayakawa's sword engulfs him. When the battle seems to be over, a blonde girl, Sawatari, in a hoodie appears and stoically resurrects the katana man. 
She then orders him to kill Hayakawa and to do it well this time. In a flash, the katana man is behind Hayakawa and he runs his weapon clean through his chest. Himeno, seeing Hayakawa fallen, tells Power to help him, but Power tells her that she's no match for the katana man at all. Himeno then calls out to the ghost hand and tells it to help. It refuses, saying that it cannot help as the girl pointing to Sawatari is dreadful. Looking back at Hayakawa, Himeno tells the devil that she will give it all she has, so in turn, it must fight it out with all it has. The devil obliges, and it transforms into an enormous being with a thousand hands. It charges on the katana man and nearly obliterates it. Sawatari commands a snake to swallow the ghost devil whole, which then appears and obliges. The ghost devil, their last hope, falls, and Hayakawa defeatedly watches as it takes Himeno with it. And that was Chainsaw Man Season 1 Recap Part 2. If you enjoyed this recap, remember to hit that sub, click the like button, and comment down below to let me know what you think of the series. I'll see you in the next video.